today I show you my custom Polygon Vander T7. What is up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is John and if you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting that bell to get instant notifications when I upload new content. Today I show you my custom Polygon Vander T7. I got this bike about six months ago and uh, I've been really, really, really happy with it. It's fantastic for the money. You know, this bike cost me 1600 bucks and I probably put well more than that into it. So it should probably, uh, you know, perform as good as it does for how, how much I put into this bike. But let's start off with the frame itself. It is a medium 27.5 frame, full suspension, obviously. And it's uh, really light. It weighs, I think from the factory, it weighs about 30 pounds. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's about what it weighs, 30 or 32. Um, I'm not sure what it weighs now. I haven't weighed it with everything that I did to it, but I imagine it either weighs that or a little less, but I'm really not worried about weight. <laughs> All right, so up top here, I have the factory bars and the factory stem. Uh, the bars are Entity Sport 780 millimeters wide. I believe they are 40 millimeter rise, and uh, the stem is a 45 millimeter stem. I haven't upgraded these because they just work perfect. I have no reason to upgrade. I'm not trying to make this bike flashy, so I'm not like gonna put blue bars on it or anything like that, but they're great. They withstand all the crashes I've done to them, and there's been a couple. <laughs> Uh, the grips, they are ODI. I uh, got these custom made, so the grips are red with blue lock rings and the just regular ODI end caps. So the steer tube for the fork is a little bit past the uh, stem there. It's about, oh, 10, about 20 millimeters past. It looks real doofy, but it allows me to actually pick this whole stem up or put it down more if I had to. Right now I have it set where I feel is perfect for me. So then I have up top here, I have Tetro Orion levers for the brakes um, with a box, box three, prime nine shifter. The fork is a RockShox Yari. It is uh, 160 millimeters of travel, 27.5 fork, 35 millimeter chassis. I have four volume reducers in it at uh, 90 PSI and that gives me a nice supple top end but will really ramp up once you know, like the big hits are happening in the bike parks. It's got a debonair air spring in it, which is the new redesigned debonair air spring. So this, this fork feels awesome. So let's go back to the rear shock. It is a RockShox Monarch R. This is the shock that came on this bike. It's not good, <laughs> but there's not a lot of uh, shocks in this weird size on the market. So if there are, they're really expensive and I don't really see a need to upgrade at the moment. I mean, I'm sure it would help a lot if I did, but I have this thing tuned pretty good to the point where I don't really need anything right now until I start really throwing more at this bike. The seat is the factory entity seat. Again, no need to change it. The dropper post is a PNW Ridge dropper post, 125 millimeters of travel. It goes up to the front at a PNW Loam dropper post remote, which the whole system works great. Uh, I really wish I would have went with probably like 150 millimeters of travel on the, uh, the dropper post because I feel like if I did that, I could probably put the whole post itself down into the seat tube a lot more to have more clearance for the seat. I'm dropping my post all the way down to the frame uh, when I go to the bike park so I have maximum clearance. I don't need a dropper post at the bike park. So could have probably got more travel and been happier with it, but it is what it is. So under the drivetrain, it's a SRAM NX Eagle crank set with a SRAM oval chain ring on it as well. Back to a box prime nine extra wide group set. The derailleur is also a box three. Um, I've destroyed these derailleurs before. I'm probably gonna be upgrading to box two on the derailleur side of things soon, but I do enjoy the range of the uh, Prime 9. It has the same range as a SRAM 1x12 with less gears, so it really works out very nicely. You don't have to worry about what gear you're in as much, really, I guess, but it's good, I like it. So on to the tires. Up front, I have a Maxxis Asagai. It's a 3C downhill compound with max grip. It is probably one of the grippiest tires I've ever had on this bike, and I've had about four different sets because I blow tires out like they're nothing. And this uh, this tire has handled pretty much everything I threw at it. And at $95, I really hope it, I get to wear this tire out because <laughs> I don't want to buy another one right now. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good tire. It's super soft. 
And the rear tire is a WTB Judge. It's a downhill casing as well. Pretty much this tire is a Maxxis DHR. It's, it's almost identical. <laughs> They're both 27.5, obviously. So onto the wheels, they are a Stan's No Tubes Flow S1 wheel set with Neo hubs. The rear hub sounds awesome. I really wish it was louder, but uh, it's it's like a nice volume. It just it's got uh, what does this have? 100 and, 102 points of engagement, I believe. I have the upgraded driver on it. They do uh, spin very fast. They're a lot faster than the WTB wheels that came on this bike. So for the brakes, they are Tektro Orion E23s. They are four piston calipers. In the front, I have a 203 millimeter rotor and in the rear, I have 180 millimeters. And then for the pedals, they're just some Bontrager orange pedals that I had lying around. Um, I have a pair of black Fukers that are actually better than these, but I just haven't found the time to put them on. <laughs> I would like to thank today's sponsor of Fitville Shoes. Discount link down in the description below. Check this out. The number one way to love your feet well is to use a proper pair of footwear. Fitville footwear is designed to love your feet. Fitville products have been uniquely designed with key elements to reduce pain, improve comfort, and promote overall foot and body health. Fitville footwear utilizes a wide toe box, a heel ring, a shock absorbing pad, a dual density sole, and anti-skid rubber. These Fitville Stridecore running shoes offer way more than just running support. I have been using them while riding my mountain bike. They are super light, supportive, and they grip my flat pedals like crazy. The cushioning adds another layer of support to my feet, protecting me on those big impacts while riding trails. The Propel Core technology excels at protecting my feet from fatigue and pains, while the Fly Knit Upper allows your feet to breathe freely in and out. If you are interested in purchasing a pair of Fitville footwear for yourself, head down to the link in the description and enter code FITVILLE22 to save 10% on your next order. Yes, so I am extremely happy that I bought this bike when I did. They're pretty much just not obtainable right now, along with basically every other bike. This thing is just awesome. I take it to the bike parks, I do like six foot drops with this thing and it just takes everything I throw at it. Hit jumps, just, I have tons of fun with it. And I haven't broke the bike yet. I mean, I broke my derailleur, but that's a pretty common thing to break. It's light, you know, it's very nimble. It, it, you get corner with this thing super fast and it's just, it's awesome. So that about does it for today's video. If you'd like to purchase anything on this bike, all the links will be down below in the description. They are Amazon affiliate links, so I may get a cut of the profits if you purchase using my link. All clickable links down below in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.